What's up, everybody? My name is Sebastian Bleak, and we are off the clock. Today, we're on here with my friend John Harmon. What's up, bro? Hey. How's it going, man? Good. What's up? You ready to show me some workflow stuff? <laughs> I think so. Huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start with the basics. That way, if anybody doesn't really know what a blend tool is, uh -huh. then they can give a, a little bit more of the uh, understanding of it. And then I'll get into some more advanced techniques, or at least stuff that I use. Since all of this stuff I taught myself through various uh, tutorials and talking to people and just playing with it and figuring it out. So, oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, see. so here we got... Go for it, bro. The, the floor blend. is yours. <laughs> Thanks. So, so, Blend Tool. What it does is it takes uh, two objects, two shapes, two lines, two whatever you can kind of imagine within Illustrator and blends them together. Yeah. And it's as simple as taking, you know, something like these two lines here and... <clears throat> hitting a button nice. and you got to blend nice that that's the the smooth color option because once you d start delving into the blend tool mm -hmm. what you find is there's three different things you got smooth color which takes one color and blends it to another mm -hmm. smoothly nice. because that's what they call it yeah. <laughs> and then you got specified steps which is the one i actually use the most all right cool which once you get down into it, it shows you that you can kind of blend one object to another in that many steps. Yeah. So you want to start getting kind of fancier or not, then that's where you get those. And then <clears throat> I don't use it very often, but I find myself doing it for the project that I'm working on now, which is the op art stuff, mm -hmm. which is specified distance. And right. the reason I like that is because then it ni it puts a nice equal spacing in between. Hey, and uh, that uh, that art, uh, that art you were talking about, we're gonna get a chance yeah. to uh, get a look at a sample later. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'll cool, bring it up. Cool. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I got I got a couple of good ones. I can't wait um, for you to show that stuff off. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. all over the place. I want to see uh, you know workflow no, stuff, no. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the the op art stuff is fun because it, it, David Macy at uh, Adobe, um, the the head of the mobile products, uh -huh. uh, he started posting on Instagram while they were over at uh, what was it OFF? What, what's what's the 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 creative conference that was over in Spain not too oh, long ago? Man. I can't I can't think of the name. It was like OFF, I think. Uh huh. He he was over there and he posted up like you know 100 days. I was like I didn't know it was starting up again. So. <laughs> I was like, what can I do in a hundred days? And I'm like, I'm doing all this fancy stuff with the blend tool. Yep. What if I simplify it and go for something like op art yeah. and just make it really hurt your eyes? And that's awesome. what it's all about. <laughs> so no, nah, it's fun so, yeah, watching so, it on Instagram, man. <laughs> yeah. You get like all the different effects that you can use just from those three different things is kind of fun. Um, I have, let's see here. Where's, where'd the images go? Oh yeah, so I, I showed you a, a stroke. Mm -hmm. You can also take in in excuse me in Illustrator. You can take uh, shapes and blend those together. Nice. And it's as simple as you know. I, I'm using a keyboard shortcut. What um, keyboard shortcut are you using? Uh, I'm on a PC, so it's Control Alt B. Nice. Um, Mac, it's uh, Command Alt B. Mm -hmm. I have a Mac at work. <clears throat> um, the other way to get to it is object blend make. Once you have the two object, two or more objects selected. Yeah. And so you can see here, this is a square going to a circle. Can you do if me a I favor? Double, can, you, can you show outline mode real quick with the blend? Yeah. I, I just like that too. That it's just an, you know, just show its appearance. It's just, yep. It just shows two shapes and a line which that line they call the spine okay, cool. and i'll show you here in a minute uh the cool things you can do when you replace the spine Sweet. with another shape so yeah um <clears throat> so yeah this uh like the other thing you want to do is you can get into the properties here by double tapping double clicking on the blend tool icon in your 
tray mm -hmm. and that gets you to where I was showing before where you can adjust the what type of spacing how many steps that sort of thing you can also get to that from object blend blend options and it takes you to the same place so as always there's multiple ways to get everywhere <laughs> yep <laughs> um yeah so the distance blend i was going to show you a little more in detail so i got these two straight lines one's at an angle one straight up and down mm -hmm. if i blend those two together and then do specified distance and then set it to a hundred whoops type it right set it to 100 pixels you see they look look distance yeah properly but like you can double check like this is a 100 pixel circle uh -huh. and it shows you that each one of these is 100 pixels apart so if you're trying to get a an exact distance for things right, right. it makes it makes it especially when like with the op art stuff i'm having myself be like exact about how far apart lines are so that they look right yeah. and then when i drop a circle on top of it that sort of thing so that's good to have yeah that's really cool so this is the thing that got me the most it's the blend stroke bug or at least that's what i call it <laughs> it's apparently been a bug for years and years and years <clears throat> and it frustrates the heck out of you when you're when you're using blend tool a lot uh -huh. so you can see here I got two lines and they're just lines and they both have two different profiles right. on them. <clears throat> if, for example, I had just two straight lines that were the same profile, get it set up here, same profile, same width, same everything, and I blend them the right button here come on oh i'm still in the window here blend those together mm -hmm. they all match right even if i was to take those two lines and make them both this width profile one they still match right as soon as i change one of them to a different width profile and a, a couple other things it breaks it Got you. So you can see all the ones in between now went back to the default profile. Exactly. And it's frustrating because you know yeah. I like to I like fancy things with fancy things like this with the blend tool. Whoa, that's and you ass. can't do that. You can't you can't do that when you when you have this problem. So a lot of times what I find if I if I need to have some variation because like one of the cool things I like to do recently is to have. Oops. Fix that. Another bug. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just funny because uh, Carlos is in the chat, and uh, we're we're keeping tally of how many bugs we we find on the show. So that's well, and a... we got to send them to the guys in India because yep. they they claim that there aren't bugs, yep. or at least the ones that we claim or show out show off to people. So send them the clip to this. Yep. When, when absolutely, we're done. absolutely. <laughs> so, so like if like I said, if I got the same profile. Uh huh. And by the way, hi, Carlos, um, yeah. if I get the same profile and I blend it, it's broken now. So like I can't even get it to come back unless I redraw those lines or at least go in and set the the profile back to the default mm -hmm. and then blend it and then switch them back in. It fixes it. But one, one of the cool things that I've been doing lately is I've been taking and blending a normal line with a dashed line. Because you get cool things like that. Where, where <laughs> That's really cool. Ashton goes, but but it, again, it's the because they're two different profile types, uh -huh. it breaks it. Yeah. So, what I've had to do, especially when, like I said, I'll show you more on this. You know, there's a lot of dash lines in this. That's awesome, man. It just looks um, so cool. You get lost <laughs> in the lines. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You get lost in the lines. It's hypnotic. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So what what I've had to had to do to to work around the bug is to take and expand the blend. So those of you who know Illustrator but might not use a blend tool, a lot, most of the people go to expand appearance yep. to, to turn something into a, a, an outline shape. It doesn't work for blend. You have to go to blend 
and then expand. Mm. And, and then point. it turns it all, and you can see how it turns it all into lines. And then, because they're all lines now, and they're all grouped, I can go back in here and say, okay, I want them all this way. But of course, that breaks the blend, so if I wanted to adjust something, I'd either have to rewind and start over, or do it manually and one at a time, so. I feel you. It's yeah. cool stuff, though. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I didn't even think about the dashed uh -huh. stuff until probably, I don't know, three or four months ago. I'm like, what happens if you use a dashed line? Yeah, and, yeah. And it worked, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll use it. Yep. Uh, another, another, I wouldn't call it a bug, but a limitation uh -huh. is curves. So say you have something like this where the curve comes back on itself. What happens, and, and you get this, if you ever play with uh, gradient meshes, yeah. you get something similar to this where if the if the mesh curve is kind of before the other end of the point where it's trying to connect to, you get some breaking going on. Yeah. <clears throat> and the same kind of thing happens here with the blend. Doo -doo. Uh, let me step it up some. Um, where you can see like it, it wraps back on itself and it gives it a cool effect. Yeah. Um, but sometimes what happens is you're trying to give it this nice kind of even mm -hmm. progression between the two and it doesn't end up working right. I mean, I, I ended up doing all of these abstract lines Whoa. using the blend tool, um, <laughs> using that, but, but that was like, okay, I want it to look that way. Yeah. I also use the nudge tool on this too. Dude, that's cool. That it almost looks like, I don't know, when I first saw it earlier, I saw you setting it up. Uh, it made me think of like, you know, those photographs they do where they drop ink in, in like water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, it made me think of that, but it's in vectors. So I got even more excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and if you like this one, I expanded everything so that Whoa. like, like I could play with the, the gradients. Yeah. Like I, you can do a blend mode, like where you have a gradient on a stroke and then it goes to another gradient on a stroke and it works pretty well. But in this case, I wanted to have like the whole object be a single object so that I could do the gradients. Yeah. And that's, I mean, to show you here. And that's the outline mode for it. Nice. Thanks. Cause you know, I was going to ask you that. I love oh, checking yeah. it out. <laughs> Got to see behind the scenes, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in the, yeah, I mean, you, and you, you know, you, you being in your day job, yep. the astute guy, you can see hiding back here, Yep. Yeah, some half toning. S s subtle half tones. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I see. I see everything you got over there, man. I see. I saw how to save your oh, pop yeah. up earlier. The whole sidebar here. Yeah. <laughs> I see your sidebar there. All that. I, I paid for a couple of Nick's uh, drinks at least. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. So that's the lines and curves and the bugs and limitations. Some cool stuff that really doesn't affect the the play. There's another way, and I mentioned I mentioned hitting Control Alt B or Command Alt B, mm -hmm. um, or going into Object Blend and Make Blend. But the Blend tool itself is actually able to make a blend, and I could take select that Blend tool, click, click, and click, and it makes me a nice straight blend, right? But the cool part is, and I didn't know this for a while, is if I select the corner of that to the corner of that mm -hmm. and the corner of that to the corner of that mm -hmm. it gives me a cross blend so it blends from that corner to that corner yeah and so on and so, forth. so like something like that like it's simple and you can set it up with a bunch of different objects um yeah but, that's what i thought you uh, i was um i was uh, kind of biting my tongue when you had uh two different <laughs> shapes because you could kind of make one shape flip into the ice like making yep. like stars look yep. like they were you know yeah into it yeah, I, in my intermediate level stuff, I got I got some cool stuff to do with uh, using the transform <clears throat> effect with the uh, Pathfinder exclude effect. Oh, which man, I love it. Too. We're over here geeking out. Even Carlos is going crazy. You know, he, he loves all this stuff. Don't be certified expert. You're making him happy right now. That's good. <laughs> all right, so I mentioned replace spline, right? Yep. So here I got a blended, you know, black to light green type of thing um and by default when you make a blend if you can see over here you got the two shapes or how two or more shapes and then a path mm -hmm. and that path isn't visible most of the time 
but in most cases it's going to be a straight line between the first object and the second object right. um if you have and want to do some creative stuff and i've done this a few times when i'm trying to make like like this curve here look right yeah. on this guy's uh, eyelid mm -hmm. i had to use a replace spline to get it right because normally those lines don't curve like that so to do that you create another path you select your blend and you select your spine that you want to do mm -hmm. and under blend there's replace spine nice so that makes the way that the art blends now is on there and that's mm -hmm. you know grab your beziers and make it however you need it to but one thing to know and i didn't realize this at first because i didn't use replace spine a lot uh -huh. a lot is these handles the closer they are and the further away affects the distance between the oh, objects. okay cool because i was going to ask you i never truly understood how that worked i would see that uh that the distance would would change yeah and and, uh, and it's it similar similar to how like the again I th there's a lot of similarities between this and uh, gradient meshes, mm -hmm. and it's similar to how gradient meshes function. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So what I notice, like, if if you're doing replace spine and you're creating a, uh, I don't know where it is here. Yeah. So so like here's a. Oh, before I get into that, so when you are creating a blend, that's a straight line blend, right? Yep. <clears throat> when something I glossed over and I didn't really point out is there's this orientation here mm -hmm. and the orientation is a line to page or a line to path. Mm -hmm. When it's a straight line, it doesn't matter because right. it's not doing anything. Right. Where it matters is if I say replace that blend with this curve. Spine. So now you see the lines are still straight up and down, right? Or at least as straight up and down it is. And here's where you see that issue where the I didn't drag the first point that I put out. Okay. So everything's grouped over here. Yeah. So to to fix that, I would make sure that I drag it out from the beginning. Or if you're so lucky to have you know yeah. paths, <laughs> I'm paying your paying your day job. <laughs> you can grab that handle that didn't exist before and and align it a little bit but yeah so so everything's straight up and down but if i go back in to my things and hit that now all of a sudden it's yeah. aligned to the curve it rather than start, yeah, I see it. the object that's dope. so yeah something to know i don't yeah, i don't no, really play great. around but but it comes in handy when you're trying to do cool effects yeah man oh, it's awesome you got to know like all the breakdowns of the tool you know what i mean yep <laughs> all right pathfinder exclude i mentioned that i was going to talk about it cool. so here i got two objects i got a big red ball mm -hmm. and a red square mm -hmm. they're centered on each other i select both i blend them nothing so far right. but it's a blend off but if you go into effect, and I found this on, uh, I think it was like Toots Plus or something, had a tutorial that I found years ago. If I go into Pathfinder, I love Pathfinder. I use it yep. for almost everything in Illustrator. I don't I don't actually like to use the, uh, the Shaper tool much. Oh, okay. I kind of create them manually. But Exclude isn't something that you really play with in this interface for it. I mean, oh, it's okay. there. Right. But under effect oh this is cool man this is cool i like i like seeing pathfinder as an effect man this is cool stuff <laughs> so so all i did was i had those two s objects still selected uh -huh. and i went into pathfinder exclude under effects and now all of a sudden i have this red white and red setup still only two objects still kind of fun there but what it's doing is that in between stage between the square and the circle is yeah. now excluded from the other two Gotcha. And the cool part is, is as you get, you go in and add more steps. Whoa. <laughs> have, like, 
depending on how many you do, yeah, you now have man. the objects that way. That's the fun awesome. part is, isn't that great? I've never yeah, seen I, that, I, man. It, That's super cool. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll get to it in a minute, but like the like this op art thing that I've done, yeah, that most of that was done with a blend. Nice. So like I have a blend drop shadow, a blend background, a blend sh uh, highlight. All of those things are done with blend tools just so that I could get it all lined up right. I mean, there's so much cool with that other one too. You have lighting going on there. It looks, it looks great. Yep. You want to see something even more fun? Yeah, man. What's <clears throat> up? I'm game. <laughs> so, so if I take this square, right? Yeah. Just select that single square. Oops. If I don't lose my selection here. And rotate it. All it does is basically change the, the step. If I can resize it and it just changes everything there. But if I take that object select under effect transform and here mm -hmm. if i use the rotate tool i'm oops. intrigued i'm intrigued <laughs> yeah. i use the rotate tool oh man <laughs> circle still and only rotate this based on how many Dang. rotations you're telling it to do and now you have like simple cool op art mind blown bro mind is and blown right now move it around within there and you still keep that rotation and the cool part is again all of it uh, i'm telling you <laughs> a, a student doesn't pay me <laughs> i've been using their products for so long mm -hmm. if i say go in here and <clears throat> use the smart dynamic shapes here and i, I assume you can do this with uh, the built-in adobe ones but <clears throat> select switch that square into a circle yep. or sorry square uh, what am I at polygon septic yeah, polygon then you can kind of add more points and it'll get more cycles and you can change it from that to a star and pull in the center points you, know, yes. you can play with the round corners you can do just like you can sit there and play with it all day long yeah and try to find cool things to do. <laughs> and that's what I've done for most of them. And, you know, doing little offset things. With yeah, James that looks James cool. I, you know, James my, Bond. my favorite part about that is uh, just, just watching Illustrator do something you're not used to seeing in Illustrator, man. That's Yeah, you know, and the stuff that I don't think it was supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. That's I so like cool. finding stuff that it's not supposed to do and doing it. Yep. That's so rad, man. That's yeah. so cool. So advanced techniques yeah. i wouldn't even call them advanced other techniques <clears throat> so we got where am i looking at my notes do, do, do. all right circle white circle i want to make a nice 3d effect right so yeah. i select those things but i don't want to have to go in and 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 you know, go into 3D and extrude and bevel and try to figure out things there. But I just want to have a nice, cool, like highlight effect. So if you select those two objects and blend them by default, yeah, you got you got <laughs> smooth color is automatically selected. That makes all the so, sense in the world. <laughs> and, and, and like, that's all it is. It's just two objects blended together, and you can yeah. adjust it like. You know, setting the opacity on this inner circle down a little bit or transparency down a little bit so that it's not I'm, so intense. I'm kind of just kicking myself for not thinking of doing that in the past, <laughs> man. That's, yeah, it just it's, it makes sense. Freaking simple. Yeah, it's yeah, in my it, face. It's configurable, right? So, like, you yeah, know, oh, I, change I the lighting. Ah, oh, yeah. I, oh, man, you're blowing yeah. my mind right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that with kind of like a shadow effect too yep. so like if i turn that if i turn that that dark oh not that way <laughs> helps if i do the right thing set it to like a darker blue um uh, oh, what happened there oh i think it yeah for some reason it set it back to one <laughs> you can change you know how it looks based on how many steps you have going yeah yeah and like here's here's another example it's just two pieces it's a rounded rectangle and a, a rectangle in it and you blend them you get kind of a highlight effect yeah so 
Yeah, simple things like that. And it's just quick shortcuts. So, so like, I'll show you some examples of stuff. So, like, when I was doing... We'll start from the, the most recent. So, like I was saying here, right? Yeah. All the stuff is blend. So, like, the first thing I did, and it's... I expanded it. But, you know, I said I wanted to have... How, many, how big these lines were a 40 point line mm -hmm. all the way across my 3000 by 3000 thing and I wanted them evenly spaced with 40 points in between so I just used the blend tool and told it to do that and created it great and then dropped in these two objects let me turn off the blends here and lined up the lines using the same kind of technique and then I was like, okay, I wanted to, to stand out a little bit. And I dropped, so like this here, that that I just turned on, that shadow is, and this hurts my eyes, sorry. <laughs> Everybody else's eyes right now too. Yep. Um, so like that shadow is a blend object. And you can see over here in my layers, it's just two lines, top line and bottom line. Wow. The bottom line is set to be 0% on the opacity. And this top one's 50%. Wow. And I blend them together. <clears throat> and the problem with this is if you have a machine that can't handle yeah. have things, you can kind of overwhelm it. Um, but yeah, like this one's set to specify distance one pixel. So they're 40 point lines that are one pixel apart. Oh, wow. So, so they're overlapping each other. Yeah. And each one of them is stepping to the next level. And then I did the same thing with like a uh, highlight. And that thing, it's the same type of object, but in that case, they're like light colors. So like a light gray, and then this one's set to like screen mode. So it's overlaying it properly. And then to top it all off, I created this drop shadow. Yeah, man, that like just seals the deal from that. Uh, go yeah. like, all the way back like that. That looks, <laughs> it's like the thing that really gets me. Uh, uh, yeah. you know. Without it, it looks kind of bland. Yeah. But then you throw that in there, and it's like, oh, that's nice. And I've done that on a couple of them. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up the page here in a minute and show cool. y'all. Um, where you at right so now, that's, bro? Where you at? I forgot to mention that. I'm in Los Angeles. Where you at? <laughs> uh, right in the middle of Virginia. Right so, on. So like, if you look at the map of Virginia, there's Charlottesville, which is kind of central Virginia, and we're probably about a half an hour to the west of Charlottesville in the in the valley, so in between mountain ranges. I drive over a mountain every day to go work. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. No, yeah, that's cool, man. It's like you have out there, but mountains, mountains no more. <laughs> no, it's just cool to hear because, like, you know, sometimes we have Carlos on from Costa Rica, uh, right. my buddy from NorCal sometimes, so it's kind of cool to see where everybody's yeah. from. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, time zone difference is really the only issue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I showed you this abstraction one. And, and the way I, I kind of did two techniques on that, I did a blend. Like I was showing, you know, I drew a bunch of different lines and different wavy line type things. Let me uh, open up a new page here. Um, and then I get a little bit of a, kinda, a Pink Floyd vibe, yeah. I think, because of the triangles. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to bother. So like a lot of times if I'm just doodling, for lack of better terms, um, I'll bring up the pencil tool. Cool. Just to, just to play, I feel, I, you know, versus the brush tool. I just want something kind of straight, straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I got the two lines there and then I'll just, I'll experiment with the blend based on that and then jump it up. start giving it kind of depth yeah increase the stroke width and then you know do nifty things like just grabbing you know certain points and you know, centering them or <laughs> not. or just you know grabbing points and moving them around to kind of find what it i mean this is just two simple black yeah. lines that are doodled on the thing and it's and it's just a lot of fun to play with exploration is what i'm hearing and that, that, that's pretty cool man yeah so um so yeah that's some of the technique and then what i did for that after i found what i liked you know like played around with a couple of different colors 
some gradients because gradients work on these too. Yeah. So like so I just set that to a black white and then this set to an orange. Um, throw that on a black. Oh, I dig this, man, because like you know, you're playing around a lot and you're kind of filling out, you know, filling out the pads, playing around. Because you know, yep. I, when you think of Illustrator, a lot of times it's more about precision. Everything's so rigid. So I like yep. again, I like seeing people use Illustrator a different way, and uh, you know, because I try to do stuff like this. I mean, obviously different techniques, but yeah. it's it's just cool to see you coming up with like just it's, organically, it's, you know. Yeah, and it's like sketching. Yeah. Like, like I'll, a lot of time where where it's like okay i'm painting with lines as i called it yeah. um and you know i've done a bunch of stuff i can bring up let me bring up uh that already looks fresh browser. right there <laughs> yeah, let me show you here do it uh, where's my page i'll just go to my b hands go for it so i have a couple examples i'll show you but i've done like since I started doing this kind of line technique, uh, sometime mid mid last year. Um, How do you like Behance? I love it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I for a while there, I was trying to maintain my own page and resizing files and a bunch of other stuff. But mm -hmm. I, now I can just upload it to one pay, place, and and it and I have my website attached to this. So actually, I'm gonna go there because for whatever reason, Behance is blinking on me. Cool. John C. Harmon com. Nope. I need to get my forwards fixed. <laughs> all good. They're all broken. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I've there done a bunch of different things. So like, let me let me go let me rewind a little bit here. So I don't know if I would say I discovered this technique. Like I'd played around with a little bit, but I'm gonna say it, bro. You discovered this technique. <laughs> we have the I mean, founder should... of well, this technique right here on off the clock. Well, I mean, <laughs> like I'll take it. But but you got people that do similar like lines. Uh, uh, what is his name? Um, out of Quebec, uh, like the load screen for Illustrator for a while there oh, had his yeah. lion on it. Uh, yeah, I, I can't him. think of his name, but I know who you're yeah. talking about. But he, he had a similar kind of thing going on with the lines. And I've seen other people. There's a guy on uh, Instagram, ZPrep. Uh, I don't know his real name, but uh, he has a similar thing going on. But I took it in a different direction. So, like, this one, the show starts on stars this uh, this coming weekend. And I'm looking forward to it. It's based on a book by uh, Neil Gaiman. Sweet. But that's that's Orlando Jones. I, I found his face, used it as reference, found a hat reference. And and what I started doing with it is like, okay, so like this one, I'm using different wave, like different... Uh, again, it's so hypnotic. It's yeah. just, like, again, I can't stop staring at this guy's face. <laughs> and then, isn't that great? And then, yeah, you can see like, like he, it, Mr. Nancy is a spider. Nice. So he's like, he's like spider from the... Uh, uh, African folklore, nice. the trickster god. Really smart so put the to tie that in there like that. That's cool. I like little uh, hidden hidden pieces like that. Yeah, and you can see there's some some. This was my first one. I played around with it for a while. Um, this one was fun just because it was nice and straightforward. Like it was Star Trek 50th anniversary, and I was just playing with some ideas. Um, let me just bring up the. Can I select that picture? this the old-fashioned way zoom out um so yeah using using the same technique and you can see kind of subtly in the background the 50 That's is so in there <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it just lines and i loved it it was so much fun to play with um but it's also the and, subject matter i'm already partial to to, to the subject to matter the, so <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I did skull because that, it's nothing better than going back to the skull uh -huh. idea um, from Overwatch, a video game, uh, Reinhardt's shield, and then in Marvel, like of course you know Marvel TV shows like Luke Cage, yeah. which, that one was a lot of fun, like using negative space for the goatee, yeah, um, rather than actually spelling out the, the the eyebrows and the goatee, I just used negative space with it. That's awesome. And then, like merging these lines, uh, and I'll show you that when I bring up the other one. But yeah, like finding the 
the happy medium and, and drawing out the shapes of the face. And I looked at a lot of like muscle pictures, oh, so like cool. the, the muscles underneath the face, just to see how, you know, how things were shaped. Yeah. Because you can see it looks kind of like you know the muscle layer under the face, yeah. under the skin. Doctor Strange, some Star Wars one. This is one of my favorites. You guys seen Rogue One? Yeah. And you got K two S O. That's so cool. Yeah, and I like the fact. That, I mean, it's just two D lines, but it gives you that nice three D feel. Absolutely, man. Yeah, it does, definitely has some depth to it. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Uh, Alan Tudyk liked it. The guy who does the voice. Wow. And then I got some recognition from like the Westworld guy, uh, Westworld team, while the show was on the air from this one. Um, some Guardians of the Galaxy. Nice. Those are not line ones. The Spider Man was fun. This one, another Westworld one. Um, if you didn't watch the show, you might not know who the character is. This one I used that technique, mm-hmm. like up here in the hair. But it wasn't really, wasn't really working for his face. Okay. I tried a couple of different ways and I didn't get it. So I hand drew all of these lines, or at least half of these lines, Whoa. using uh, using the pencil tool and then using uh, the astute uh, width <clears throat> with scribe stuff. Yeah, you can see I wanted to give it some more depth around the eyes uh-huh. and nose. You can see subtly the whoa. Sorry, cool. the uh, black lines that I used for kind of like a hatching technique, like yeah. a negative space hatching technique around the eyes. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, How long do the, uh, these take? I have uh, a couple of days at most. Right uh huh. Um, like for the most part, I can probably crank one out in a night if I have a good idea and use some good references. Like this Voltron one took me three or four nights just because I did a bunch of different ones for the lion heads and then combine them all together into like a final image using <laughs> a couple of different techniques. So. And that was just fun. And I do these for fun. I, I mean, none of these are yeah. commission pieces. They're all just kind of uh, like entertainment. That's how it goes. Uh, huh? <laughs> yeah, my that self-portrait. Cool. Yep. So the left half here I did on my iPad Pro using the pencil tool and Adobe Draw. And the right half I did using this line technique. And I actually use color, which I don't use for very often, but you know, trying to f- combine the two techniques so that yeah. they matched up pretty nicely. Um, all right, let me switch back to Illustrator here. Show you guys some details. Sweet. And Carlos loves the technique, by the way. He's excited. Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, I like the skull here. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see. Actually, I take the back. Let me show you. Per yes. Hold on. Auto savior. <laughs> yep. It's gotta do its thing. Oh yeah. Alright, so there's that's what I that's what that skull looks like based on the lines. Wow. That's all it is. Uh-huh. When I turned on I got all that stuff. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Yeah. So like with it. this one, this one I won't go too detailed, but I found like a, a medical reference image for a skull and cleaned it up, darkened it played around with the highlights and then using uh, mirror me mm-hmm. which you can you don't have to use mirror me you could use the built-in <laughs> right tool if you want to but you know why why do that when you already have it yep and and throughout the lines and what i wanted to kind of show you guys is so like look up here like on the eyebrow ridges mm-hmm. it looks like a highlight yeah but all that is when you zoom in closer is two layers of blend wow. so like i have this blend let me select the right tool here i have this blend which is this line and this line and this line and a few more over here <laughs> all do that and then i would go back and every two or three of them i'd draw another line uh-huh. for the other part with the curve in it and then blend those so that they're evenly spaced between the lines that are there Man. my whole goal and like this is frustrating me i don't want to go fix it but <laughs> But my whole goal is that the lines don't touch. Yeah. Because if they do, then that's cheating. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's like a game. I feel yeah. you, man. I feel you. Thanks for sharing that with us too, because like I'm sure, like me and Carlos always talk about different little things like that we got going on in the background. But that's kind of what it's, makes our style, though, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people look for those yeah, things. You find, you find you find that limitation that you want to impose on yourself. Yeah. And say, okay, I'm only doing it this way. Like. I, I don't go into Photoshop unless I have to. Yeah. I try to find a way to do it in Illustrator if I can. I feel you. Only time I go into Photoshop is if I've given up on trying to do it. Or if I do it. <laughs> yeah, this is a, an abstract piece I did with uh, when I was playing around with dash lines, wow. and that's it. You can see like those are some spirals, and, and then you can see these are ones that have replaced splines or spines. I'm going to call them splines. <laughs> I did 3D art for a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I replaced the spines with with curves, and then played with gradients and dashes. Wow. So like this is a solid line, and then this is the one dash, and this is another, and they're all three different gradients. <laughs> um, I already showed you the drop shadow. All right, the big boy. So this is for a project that's coming up here soon. There's a a, a, a publication a friend of mine's doing, Dude. and he lives over in. Eastern Europe. It's like money and right it, there. It looks great. Yeah, it does. It does. And in Riga, uh, switching to the web. In Riga, Lithuania. No, is it Lithuania? I don't know. Um, there's a whole section of Art Nouveau. Mm-hmm. Um, in like this whole part of town, and and they have buildings with facades you know that look like that gotcha so there's this beautiful like art nouveau art uh, uh part of this town and i was flipping through pictures and, and he was telling me about a story that a friend of his wrote about riga specifically mm-hmm. and we're looking through some examples of things and, and the idea originally was to kind of take like you know this rundown look and kind of clean it up and make it all nice and vector and mm-hmm. and I found this picture and I don't know if it's in this batch because I can't remember what I did but I found a few of these like pieces here and I'm like okay that'd be kind of cool to do in that style so I found one of the green man and pulled that in and used that as a reference for this and that's also when I discovered the whole dash line thing got you and this one this one will look a little more complex when I when I can command y because i've expanded most of the lines wow because Even i because that looks the, cool yeah because <laughs> of the dash line issue and the and the bug with the profile uh-huh. so you can see that that's kind of carried over to that this. looks beautiful man it looks like some sort of uh wood carving type of thing yeah, oh, man, yeah it does badass. it's like a woodcut thing so yeah i mean you can see like doing like a, a a thin, super thin dash line with uh, narrow or uh, close together dashes versus uh, thicker with, you know, further apart gives you kind of the sense of depth. And that's all it is, is just using those lines and going from one to the other. And then cool part is, is once you start getting into some of the other ones, you start getting these kind of cool, like negative hatching effects mm-hmm. just from dashes. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything extraneous to, to like make that better. But that's what's so cool, but it's like a accidental symphony. Like it's yeah. <laughs> it, everything just seems to fall into place. I mean, obviously there's technique, and you use yeah. it so much, you make it fall into place. But it's just like, you know, you just think about it. it starts from a couple simple pads, and then you end up having this beautiful layout. It just looks great, man. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna do a couple more of these. He he sent he he walked around town and took a bunch of pictures of the uh, the parts of the building, gotcha. and I'm gonna do some more of these. I also combined it with. Uh, with my uh, a variation on the sphinxes from this are also involved in that story. This is from a never ending story. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that took me a while to get right. Like like drawing all of the, the, the feathers on the yeah. parts, that took a while. I, I was starting to get into like copy and paste as I went through and they didn't always work, so. Oh man, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, so so that's it. I mean, I I got. I'm always experimenting with them. I'm always trying to find new ways to do things. Um, like I said, the op art, and I'll, I'll show you guys real quick on kind of on the out here. Um, the op art stuff. Uh, 
as Instagram. It's easier to see that way. Cool. Um, the I've been I'm on day what am I, what day is today? Day twenty one of it. And and a lot of these, not every one of them, but a lot of these I've been doing uh, using the blend tool, just because it, it saves time and effort. Some of them I've kind of played around with other ways of doing it, but yeah, like like this one's definitely a blend tool. I call this one Blue Ridge, which is a mountain range that I go over, and that's that's using like four different hand drawn lines, and they're all blended together, and then doing a separate set for the sky with uh, thicker lines to thinner lines. And then uh, this one was fun to do. Oh, cool. Yeah. And again, blend tool, some playing around with different things. Blend tool for the background and then modifying that line set up across the glasses and using mirror meta so I don't have to do as much work. <laughs> uh, and then I made some variations on it with... Uh, some color. Some colors. Just different different options it's weird because it's like it's it gives me like an old school vibe but uh it, there's something yeah. refreshing about it though i, th- I don't know it's, i think it's the line usage it's kind of feels new but uh, yeah. yeah it's it, like i was i was definitely channeling like you know old school pop art yeah. type of stuff for that one this was uh, you know just fun like these are blends thin line to thick line in circles this here that gives it depth all that is is basically different line profiles on circles so it looks like it's standing out, and but they're just line profiles on circles with the blend tool. And for anybody watching this and they could actually see me, every time he shows a piece, I start squinting because it, it <laughs> looks different. It's not that it's bothering me. It's just that, like the shadows look different. You start seeing like the, the piece a little bit uh, in a different way. So <laughs> when you see and it, you'll be like, why does he keep squint, squinting? It's just that. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one was fun. I like did a blend tool. Um, from triangle to triangle, but then I broke it all, and then uh, used the scissors to to chop all the lines wow. and them up one, and kind of <laughs> did. It's, it's a concentric triangle um, that it goes around there, just just to make it different. Yeah, that one's fun too. That's again, that's the same kind of you know, thick to thin on the circles, mm-hmm. so it looks like it's standing out. Uh, oh, I'm just going to kind of skip through these. Dash lines mm-hmm. with the blend tool. Um, this one, blend tool with semicircles. So like half circle and half circle and then blend tool and then increased it so the distance and then flipped it 90 degrees and copied it and get that effect. Um, this one, I didn't use the blend tool at all. <laughs> I'll just say that out right. This one was fun though, because it gives you that subtle. You can see the curve through it, but yeah. it's it's not apparent right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, definitely blend tool. I like that. It feels like I'm falling off the edge. <laughs> yeah, and this one took forever because what uh, I drew all the lines, or I, I did a blend for all the lines here, and then I drew uh, another line and did uh, oh, what's it? Did okay. You don't have to save. I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, used the outline option in Pathfinder with that that hand drawn line over top of it. So all of these straight lines now had a point along them where I drew that line. Mm-hmm. And then I took all of the the points along this edge and dragged them down. Gotcha. And then used the nudge tool to warp it out. Blend tool, obviously, dashed lines to give it depth. That, I'm not even going to have to say that that was the blend tool. It, <laughs> it looks like a pyramid looking down. Yeah. That was the fact I was going for. But then if you look at it again, it looks like a hallway. Yeah, going it over. could look like I'm in a room. Yeah. Yep. Um, Easter. Nice. So, yeah, I had an oval with a solid line out to an oval that was outside the frame with the dash line. Um, again, that drop shadow. There you go. You know I'm gonna like that. Yeah, if I yeah. see that it's drop shadow in there. I'm gonna it's so excited. simple too, and it's it's just here's here's some angled lines that match up with the lines in the background. Um, that one we already saw. Hey, and it looks like uh, Michael Mondragon made it to the party. What's up, guys? Oh, Michael. 
Yeah, I'm just showing off my uh, op art stuff that I've been working on lately and how it relates to the to using the blend tool. Sweet. And there's another one with the drop shadow. Looks so and this one's fun because it's, it's the blend tool for the background and it's all just straight lines across evenly spaced. And then I did a half circle um, with half circle to half circle with the blend tool with the same amount of spacing. So like when I was telling you guys earlier about using uh, the Man, it's beautiful. specified distance, uh -huh. that's what I was doing is just saying, okay, everything is this distance apart when I blend it together. So that way you have that same specified distance. And then I dropped in a drop shadow with the, the half circle using the blend tool. Blend tool multiple times oh, with cool. thick to thin. It gives you that kind of like ripple effect. Hey, dude, these are so different. Like yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is I only really have like a half an hour window to do them in the morning uh -huh. before I have to go to work. So I get up, I make, make lunches for the family, get everything ready to go. And then before my son has to get on the bus, uh -huh. I sit down for about a half an hour and, and put something together. Nice, man. That's great to hear, dude. Yeah, this one was fun. I did... Uh, this is this top part here was using the the exclude pathfinder with the diamonds mm -hmm. and then to give it more depth i went in and used the width scribe <laughs> tool with a gradient and then flattened that out and, and cleaned up the edges wow. so, so yeah that's a recent one this one this one hurts. Yeah. Like, like I, I, it's I always moving. It up. I can't look at it too long. It keeps moving. Because it makes me hard. Like, it makes it hard for me to see anything. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then this is today's uh, little CMYK action. Yeah. So, like, like back in, like, when I had a, a spirograph, I, I, I would, like, doodle with a spirograph. But then I, like, when I was studying geometry in high school, and that was forever ago, you know, like, yep. like caveman time. Um, I remember coming up with a, a line type of thing that, you know, if you draw straight lines connecting top point to bottom point yeah. and merging it, then you get a curve where the lines cross. So that was using that. And then I duplicate it multiple times. Cool. So I don't know what I'm working on tomorrow. Uh, I haven't come up with any ideas yet, but my, my trend seems to be uh, circles mostly. <laughs> what number are you on right now? Uh, I forgot. Uh, that's 21. Oh, okay, cool. See so about so yeah, I'm almost a quarter way in. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. If anybody's got any questions specific, you know, like how you did this or how you do that for any of the stuff that I've shown, feel free to reach out here, uh, my Twitter, Instagram, wherever. Um, I plan on doing hopefully like doing a whole like live recording of something mm -hmm. and then sh time shortening it sometime soon. I just need to get the setup right. Oh, that'd be just, cool, man. Just, I'd love to like, see that stuff. This, yeah. Let me see. I'll go ahead and give them a chance to ask you some questions in the chat, but I got some questions for you, by the way, too. Sure. Like, um, I got actually three many. One you're already kind of talking about a little bit, like, uh, you know, lately I've been working with a bunch of students and they always ask me, like, you know, how do they get inspired for something like this? How do they find their their look uh, and stuff like that? So <laughs> do you have any kind of uh, advice for, for somebody like that? Uh, for me, it happened organically. So I'm not young. I, I was an IT guy for like 12 years and then I was in the military for, t for four before that. And I was always like in technical, you know, jobs, but I always loved art. And for me, like I taught myself how to do most of this stuff while I was sitting doing IT work day to day and found uh, found a few things that I liked, a few things like I tried drawing and I'm not a great, you know, pencil on paper type of artist. Same here. Um, so I had to find ways to make pretty things that other people liked using different techniques. And then uh, so uh, the year I met you, it was Adobe Max uh, 2014, yep. I think it was. Um, I Earlier that year, I did a, like a 100-day challenge, and like I'm doing now. And I didn't have a, a specific uh, theme in mind at that point. I was just exploring. Yeah. And I started out doing some like pencil drawings and a few other digital things. And then I, I happened upon uh, a technique, which... I will show it has nothing to do with the blend mode. All right, it's cool. Um, 
Adobe had posted up, I guess the illustrator, whoever was in charge of the social media team that year, um, they posted up a, uh, just clean in here, uh, technique. So line, right? Mm -hmm. If you hold down the tilde key, <laughs> the top the corner, yep. you get, it draws that shape. And let me hide the line here. However many times, right? Okay. And I was like, okay, so you can do that. You can do, um, oops, actually, they, they, their version of it was squares. So they showed it with, you know, you, you click and drag right. and before you let go, you hold down the tilde key and you get this cool kind of effect. Right. And it was a lot of fun. I was like, well, if you can do that with squares and other shapes, why can't you do that with lines? Yeah. So I created this and then i was like okay so that's kind of cool for one thing or another <laughs> what if i take and use the warp tool and started playing with it with the warp tool nice and started getting kind of cool effects kind of like what i get with the blend mode when i when i adjust it but you know i i created a whole series of like uh animals and birds and stuff uh, i did that butterfly that a student yeah. liked and made my t-shirt for it the winning using, design using winning design <laughs> um and and used use this technique for that and and from there i was like okay that's fun and then i started doing kind of like a low poly style which a lot of people were doing which is the the triangles and what really made it for me was combining the two so you have the nice organic feel of these kind of lines and then the, the rigid triangles of the low poly style. And so I ended up with, um, mm -hmm. I can't type. <laughs> I ended up with a whole series of those. And I did like, uh, I gotta go back a ways for this fan art. Um, uh, where is it? Yeah, so I, I did a whole series of, of ones where it's low poly with that, that uh, I called it geo contour, so geometric contour. Um, so yeah, so like his hair is using that that, that technique using the, the tilde key yeah. and gradients. And then this is when I had my Surface Pro and I drew all those triangles by hand using wow. the touch interface. Wow. And I used, I used a reference image for it, obviously. I mean, I'm not going to you know, yeah. imagine that. Yeah. But but like the time it took to do those, and that got me some attention. This one, this one the Adobe guys liked a lot, so they shared it out quite regularly. That's cool. So, yeah. So so the fact that, that I had two styles that other people used, mm -hmm. and I started combining them into a singular style is what kind of worked for me. That's that's what got people to, to notice my work. And that helped me kind of come up with, you know, what am I gonna do that works for my, my style of working, which is not sitting down and drawing a sketch necessarily, but, you know, something that's a little more rigid using an illustrator, but at the same time, still kind of fun and flowy and creative. Got you, got you. And then, so like, uh, uh, I mean, this 100 day project, how many times have you done yeah. that? Actually, this is my second time. Okay, cool. And, um, and, I've done and a couple it? other like 30 day things like, you know, uh, spe specific pick a, a, a theme for 30 days and do a month's worth of work when I need kind of inspiration. Right. Um, but, but yeah, this is the first since 2014. This is the first uh, one thing that I've been doing. So, yeah, right. I do a lot of fan art, you know, musicians and movies and tv shows i've done a few like uh alternative movie posters that have been posted up around um yeah i explored like a saul bass style so exploring other people's styles is good cool like make, making your own thing using kind of like an old school style is fun i wouldn't call them the masters but you know something that like explore yeah i think that's the biggest thing i'm saying is is don't don't settle on just mimicking somebody else's work yeah find something that works for you got you and try different things and don't be afraid of using shortcuts don't be afraid of you know 
going out and when you have the money spending it on astute graphics plugins Ooh. so that they makes your life easier <laughs> but but you know find something that works for you and explore it nice. and, and just have fun with it let's see i got a couple other things i wanted to bug you about uh um, so what are you what are you excited about right now that you're working on um this uh magazine project nice one um i also have a project that started right after the election which really has nothing to do with uh blend mode but this is my uh face my words project uh okay. face my words.com and the idea behind that was uh you know using kind of illustrations with quotes mm -hmm. um uh, and and posting those up and linking out those quotes so you know kind of saying something so you know face my words yeah and most of the something to do with uh fighting hate and civil rights and okay you know just kind of doing it and i started working with this is my yeah this is uh, uh larry cooney jr who's uh another ipad illustrator um who i discovered through uh behance he he had done a series of of these on his iPad and then we combine those with some quotes and I got another local artist that I'm working with um, to do a couple of others and I you know I started expanding on you know the first couple for me were the ones where the words are on the face mm -hmm. um, but then I've started expanding into other styles of you know the quotes on the hair or the quote especially when the quotes are long having those kind of separated out um, you know, this one was one of my, the, the Langston Hughes one is, you know, a whole part of his poem. So just trying new things and it gives me a chance to explore yeah. illustration styles as well as to, you know, make a point. Yeah. Yeah. That's badass, man. I like it. I didn't even know you were doing that, man. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, that's... yeah. And then just experiment. That's what it's all about. Uh, what are your plans next? What do you got? What do you got? What's next from, uh, from my buddy, John? Uh, the day job is 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 making uh, uh, education software. Uh -huh. um, so so spare time wise, uh, you know, finish off the op art project. Probably do some more fan art for for upcoming shows for like the summer months. Um, you know, those get some those get eyes on my on my work. So by being able to sit down and do it like this one, I did uh, also for American Gods. This one was all done on my iPad. Um, well, most of it was done on my iPad, and I hand drew all the little lines using nice. Adobe Draw, and that's again like kind of like a woodcut type of mm -hmm. style. Um, but yeah, fan art, looking up, finding freelance gigs here and there. Sweet. Um, yeah, just ha having fun with it, and then you know this this magazine project once it comes out. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So you gotta let me know when that drops. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then as far as like if somebody wants to check out your work, I got up right now your uh, your Twitter and uh, mm -hmm. and your website. Is there anywhere else uh, you want people to hit you up at? Uh, I got a Facebook page. All, all of my 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 Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook page are all at the John Harmon, cool. and that's H A R M A N. Which if you have it up on the screen, they should know. Cool. Yeah. Um, I did that recently. I, I did away with all my s disparate names and made them all the same. So it, it made it easier for people to find me. So yeah, hit me up there. Um, I'm always happy to, to look at doing like projects with each other, you know, like combining my style with somebody else's style, yeah. figuring out things like, like this shirt, which is actually on my site as well. Um, my buddy who lives nearby is a character artist and he sketched out the idea or with a character mm -hmm. and I took it into illustrator and, and did all the line work and stuff and cleaned it up and put it up on my site. So gotcha, you know, gotcha. doing, doing cooperative stuff. I'm always happy to do that. Oh, that's super cool, man. All right. And then, so I'm gonna bug you to come back on soon. If, if you don't, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that was pretty I'd, dope. I'd be happy to talk for an hour and a half about vector stuff. Oh man, I dig it. I dig it. All right, man. So we've been on for about an hour already. Uh, I usually do a quick tip right about now, but I'm going to skip that because I'm going to come on uh, later on this week with Carlos Garro and with Justin. So I'm, I'm still going to do two more broadcasts this week. So we'll just leave this one all about you. Uh, awesome. <laughs> is there anything you want to say before we close this out? No, just no? keep making. That's Ooh. all you got to do. I like it. I like yep. it. All right, <laughs> all right, brother. Well, thanks. Thanks to everybody in the, in the chat. 
whoever came to check us out. I really appreciate it. Big thanks to you, John. Thanks for coming out, man. This was super cool. Like, my brain is uh, feels great right now. You, you blew my brains a couple times. It was dope. I liked it. All right, awesome. man. So we're going to get out of here. Uh, thanks again, John. I appreciate it, man. All right, See man. you guys. Let's go get some tacos. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs>